2022, we're getting the new Top Gun, we're getting Elden Ring, we're getting Gran Turismo 7, we're probably getting like 10 more stupid ass variants, and we're getting all of these rad cars. And look, there is a ton of them, so I'm not gonna waste your time. Let's get right into it with a car that I've already talked about so much, the new Nissan Z. <laughs> basically the only Japanese revival that I actually care about since it comes with turbos, 400 horsepower, and a freaking stick shift. Take that new Supra. <laughs> Nissan says the new Z will be ready for spring of 2022 and will cost around 40,000 bucks which makes it actually really affordable. It puts it in the same realm as like a Golf R or a base model Supra and let me tell you I think I'd rather have the Z. Now if that's pocket change to you, you might want to consider buying one of the most rare and exciting cars coming out in a long time. I'm talking about the Bond brand, Aston Martin, and their upcoming Valkyrie Spider convertible. Look, with NFTs on the rise, I think the word exclusive is going to start getting thrown around a lot in 2022. And sure, there's exclusive, you can get like a rare Porsche 911 or a Pagani, or there's a one of 25 Aston Martin Valkyrie Spider, each costing around 3 million bucks. And sadly, all of them have already been sold. So sadly, pretty much you and I can only watch them drive by and exist in Top Gear episodes. Which is okay, because you know, it's not too bad to look at, and neither is this new Lotus that's coming out. It's called the Amira, keeping up the long tradition of Lotus names that I'm gonna mispronounce and you guys are gonna harass me for. But it's more than just a name, it actually is a big engine behind the front seats. A turbocharged AMG 4 banger pumping out 360 horsepower. Or if you spend an extra 20 grand on top of the already pretty high $77,000 price tag, you can get the 400 horsepower Toyota engine that they've basically been using forever. Still, the cheaper option with the four banger is still exciting because this is Lotus we're talking about, and these guys know how to put small engines to good use. Now, next year, if you are in the market for a four cylinder that doesn't break the bank, you're gonna probably be looking at the new Subaru Boyroyuru GT86, but specifically the one tuned by Gazoo Racing. And the new GR86 can be summed up in one sentence no more torque dip, which is not a new line of ranch flavored dip that I'm selling for Ruffles chips. No. Torque dip was actually one of the only complaints people had about the outgoing 8.6, and it looks like Toyota and Subaru have listened to the public and fixed it, meaning that one of the best cheap sports cars on the market is now even better. And that's not the only car that Gazoo Racing had its hands on this year. They also twinkled their toes in the waters of the brand new Supra, coming out with an exclusive Supra named the A91CF. And I'm not really sold on it. Look, there's only one thing we wanted Toyota to do to the new Supra, and that's put a frickin' six speed in it. But instead, we get about 20 grand worth of carbon fiber and a uh, controversial front end redesign. I don't know. I'm a big fan of what Gazoo Racing has been doing lately, but maybe not even they can fix the Supra. You see, when Gazoo Racing has its hands on a lighter, cheaper car, they seem to really work their magic. Remember all the hype that came out when the GR Yaris debuted? The world went insane. Same. Because the GR Yaris is arguably one of the best cars to come out that is not for sale in America. Look, we here in the States want lightweight, fun cars. And luckily, next year, Gazoo Racing is here for us with the GR Corolla. And this is Toyota's attempt at taking on the Civic Type R. So expectations are really high, especially with the successes like the GR Yaris and the GR86. I think Gazoo Racing really has what it takes to be a competitor in this space. And look, we can never have enough hot hatches in our lives. Well, hold on your hype because it sounds like maybe the GR Corolla might be delayed a little bit, so we're hoping we get it next year. And I have even more terrible news. 2022 is also also the year that we get the new WRX. Yeah, it's coming. It's covered in plastic, it's ugly as hell, it's not any faster, and it's got a stupid gearless transmission. But hey, it's coming next year, yay! Uh... Anyway, moving on, let's talk about the Cadillac Blackwing. Sure, this one's coming in at 80,000 bucks, but that's actually kind of a great deal. You see, the CT5V Blackwing is actually a BMW M5 competitor, and it comes with a manual transmission and a supercharged V8, meaning that it might actually bring the heat to the M5 and AMG rivals, who both cost around $20,000 more. And even better news, if you want that cool Blackwing badge, the CT4V Blackwing is coming out next year as well. Sure, it's only got a V6 instead of 
the big V8, but who cares because that V6 makes 472 horsepower. I really don't think you'd have much to complain about when you're driving that. One thing you might be able to complain about though is the new Mercedes EQS. It's an all electric Mercedes that looks like what people in the 80s thought all future cars would look like. But this is a list of cars that I am actually excited about, and there are reasons to be excited about the EQS. When you compare it to its competitor, Tesla, sitting on the inside of an EQS actually looks like a nice experience. You don't have to drive by iPad and all the, you know, panels fit together. Plus, the EQS does a 4 second 0 to 60 with its performance model. So luckily you have that supple leather seating to hold you as you break your neck going up to highway speeds. Now next up, I'm going to talk about a word that's going to get you kind of excited, and that's Pagani. But unfortunately, it's just another Huayra. <laughs> I mean, I get it. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. But when is Pagani going to give us something else? The Zonda was discontinued 10 years ago. But putting all that aside, this flavor of Huayra, simply named the Huayra R, just like the Zonda R before it, is honestly so damn fast and so impressive that, you know, I'm excited again. It's got a V12, which, you know, not going to be saying that very often pretty soon, but is absolutely track focused, and it's probably one of the last Huayras we're ever going to get. But don't expect to see this drive around in Beverly Hills because the Huayra R is not street legal, which is, you know, the reason I'm not buying one. That and, you know, the price tag. And there's no money in here! <laughs> one car I do wish I was buying is the luxury Grand Tour Lexus IS500 F Sport. I mean, it's got four doors, four exhaust tips, four wheels, and it costs less than 60,000 bucks. And oh yeah, it also has like a badass V8. Look, with the LC500, Lexus proved that they can make a better Supra than Toyota themselves. And this IS500 F Sport is going to prove that point even more. Now the question is going to be, do you buy a CT4V Blackwing or an IS500 F Sport? They make about the same horsepower, they're about the same size, and they cost about the same. But you know, it's not really a hard decision if you're under the age of 65, you're going to get the Lexus. Now, speaking of cars young people buy, the Golf R is back. The Volkswagen Golf R is basically a Civic Type R that's grown up a little bit. It's not as shouty, it's still pretty fast, and it has a lot of storage room. And look, in the world of hot hatches, the Golf R and the GTI are always among the top three, which is kind of impressive. I mean, no other company and no other brand has been as consistent, really, as the Volkswagen Golf. When you buy a Golf, no matter what the generation, you know what you're getting. And the new R and GTI are no different. Now, if you've been paying attention to car news lately, BMW is making some pretty controversial looking cars. Cars. This is just painful to watch. But luckily, BMW doesn't make them all that way. And the new BMW M5 CS is just for you if you hate the look of the new M3. The new M5 looks fantastic, and the CS stands for carbon sh**, but it also features like a super elegant bronze trim and bronze wheels. But who cares how it looks, the BMW M5 CS is fast as hell. It is essentially the fastest BMW sedan BMW has ever produced, coming in at around 600 horsepower. And to show that BMW means business, the interior of the M5 CS even comes with four racing bucket seats. It's a pretty cool feature, I think that should be in more cars. Sadly, the M5 CS is a very limited production and it's gonna cost around 180,000 bucks which is at least cheaper than the new Lamborghini. And, and no, not that one, that one's next. No, first up, we're gonna talk about the Aventador LP780-4. Look, it's hard to keep track of new supercars, with manufacturers like Lamborghini and McLaren basically naming their cars with a bingo machine. And it sounds like every other day there's a new one faster than the old one. But I think the LP780-4 is something you should be paying attention to, because it has a 770 horsepower V12, which is not something you're gonna hear from Lamborghini for months longer, which means this is the most powerful Aventador to date and maybe one of the last Aventadors. But of course, if we're talking about new Lambos, you don't want to talk about the old Aventador, you want to talk about the new Countach. Especially if you're an old man like me and you had a Lamborghini Countach up on your wall on a poster for most of your teenage life. The new Countach is a blend of classic Lamborghini design and the new edge of Lamborghini. And honestly, I think they kind of nailed it. It is missing a big giant wing, which, you know, I think should be on every car. But of course, the question you're asking is, is it fast? Of course. Is it loud? <laughs> It's a Lamborghini! Does it make 800 horsepower? Yes. What more do you want from a Lamborghini? Hell, even the price tag is Lamborghini, coming in at around two and a half million bucks. So if you're lucky enough to buy one of these, go ahead and comment down below and let me know how it is to drive. 
Now, it is 2022 and the future is coming, so that means there's going to be a lot of EV news. And I'm gonna sum it up for you just really quick. And look, if you're thinking about skipping this section, before you do, check out our Save the Piston shirt up here and show your disdain for EVs. Anyway, I'm gonna go quick. First, there's the Karma GS6, which is a Fisker Karma, but fully electric. Then there's the new BMW i4 and iX, which for some reason BMW put the pig snout on even though there's no radiators. Next is the Kia EV6, which is actually a pretty decent looking EV coming out of Kia. I'm uh, kind of hyped for it. And finally, there's the Genesis Electrified G80, which clever naming convention, Genesis. It's exactly what it sounds like. It's a G80, but electric. Okay, that's it. That's all. Come back because it's Corvette time. <laughs> Look, I did a whole video on the Z06, but I'll sum it up in one sentence. The new Corvette Z06 is encroaching on hypercar territory. It has a flat plane V8 that sounds like a Ferrari. And the Z06 is gunning for the GT3 RS, which is really damn impressive for a car that costs under a hundred grand. But if it's anything like the C8 launch, don't expect to get your hands on one until 2023, if we live that long. While you're waiting for your C8 Z06 though, you can buy a Dodge Challenger or Charger, and you might want to before they're gone. There is a new model year for these cars, but let's be honest, they're the same as they always have been. It's a ton of horsepower for the price, and it is the last hurrah of American muscle car freedom coming out of Dodge. You see, Dodge's CEO said that in 2023, there will no longer be a Challenger or a Charger. So get one now, because in the next few years, the world's gonna get a little weird. What do I mean? Well, the next car on my list is a V6 Ferrari. That's right, next year we get the Ferrari 296 GTB. And like I alluded, it's powered by a V6. What? What the f Which absolutely sounds like sacrilege, but at least it's a hybrid? Okay, okay. It still makes 830 horsepower, so it's still a Ferrari. And it still costs $320,000, so it's definitely still a Ferrari. And look, we're all gonna have to get used to hybrid and small engine powered supercars as the world moves away from gas guzzling V12s like Lamborghini. Still, it's good to know that manufacturers like Ferrari are on the leading edge of this stuff and they're still gonna bring us the power even if it doesn't have the displacement. Now on the complete opposite side of the spectrum, Ford is bringing us a new Raptor. Ferrari is quintessentially Italian and the Ford F-150 is quintessentially America. America. And the Raptor is America on steroids. It's excessive, it's loud, it's expensive, it's too big. For a long time, the Ford Raptor was the king of the crop. But then Dodge came along with the TRX and challenged the king. So Ford is clapping back with the new Raptor. And this one is called the Raptor R. And the R stands for really a lot faster. Because to keep up with the TRX, Ford had to make their own 700 horsepower truck. And look, by all means, I'm sure this is gonna be fantastic. Who doesn't love the Raptor and who doesn't love a Raptor with more horsepower? You slap an R badge on anything and it's better. But what about a different letter? What about the N? Well then you're talking Hyundai, who are coming out with two new N cars this year, the Elantra N and the Kona N. Both are gonna make around 280 horsepower and come with dual clutch transmissions. They're equipped with carving differentials and very easily compete with the likes of the Golf GTI and Civic Si. And look, I know it's a Hyundai and we're not all super excited about performance Hyundais, but it's fun to see that they're getting in the mix because, you know, competition breeds better cars. And honestly, with the last few releases by Hyundai and their end division, I'm expecting some big things out of their future. Okay, real quick, I'm gonna do a little bit more electric news, but this time it's about trucks. We'll be fast, I promise. The F-150 Lightning is coming, which you don't need to know about because it's an F-150 and it's an EV. What else do you need to know? The GMC Hummer EV is coming and that's a lot cooler because it's a big freaking Hummer. It can crab turn and it has tons of horsepower. And finally, Rivian is releasing their pickup truck, beating the Cybertruck to market. And honestly, anything that pisses off Elon Musk is okay with me. Damn. Okay, we're done with electric talk, I swear. Let's talk about an engine that makes a beautiful sound. The Natuno engine coming in the new Maserati MC20. Yep. For seemingly the first time on ideal cars, we're talking about a Maserati that isn't powered by a Ferrari and probably won't be the worst depreciating car in the world. No, instead, we're talking about Maserati's supercar revival with the MC20, coming powered by a high output V6. It's a twin turbo three liter engine that sounds just amazing. 
mounted in the middle of a super tight chassis, meaning that the MC20 is likely to be the fastest Maserati ever, period, so far. And speaking of supercars, my favorite supercar brand, McLaren, is making a new one. It's called the Artura. And yes, it's another high output V6 hybrid like the Ferrari. Yes, Ferrari, Maserati, and McLaren are all coming out with hybrid supercars at the same time. All for around $200,000, so I'm expecting some really good YouTube comment from other creators soon. And the Ferrari's gonna win in the horsepower department, and I think the Maserati wins in the looks department. But the McLaren seems to be the fastest. Only time will tell. And speaking of time, I only have time for one more car. And it's actually a really old car. And I'm talking about the 2022 Porsche 911 GT3. Look, if you ask anyone who actually drives sports cars often what the greatest car is, the biggest feat of engineering in the sports car world is, it's the 911 GT3. And the new 2022 GT3 is pretty much the same as it ever was. Which is actually a good thing. The 911 GT3 was already pretty much perfect. And the real exciting news though, is that the RS version is likely on the horizon. And with the 911 GT2 RS holding the ring record for a while now, this new GT3 is already encroaching on a sub seven minute Nürburgring time. So that's my list of all the new cars coming in 2022. Which one are you most excited about? For me, probably that GR Corolla. You know, if it actually arrives. If it doesn't, I guess I'll buy a Countach. As always, this is Ideal. Subscribe down below, like the video, don't bother disliking because you can't see it anymore. And I'm the Squid, and I will see you next time. Bye!